I'll go on YouTube, man. <laughs> so what is what? Uh, maybe I'll highlight a couple things about this fridge. First of all, the POC here has these SMP connectors and DC wiring. The I will warn you guys already. The there's these connector, these cable, these copper rigid cables that go from the POC up to this plate. That is what I had. This is the request I had in the system when I bought it from Oxford. Is to have a breakout plate because I don't we don't use SMPs, so we want to have a breakout plate that goes from SMP to an, you know, we want to go from these SMPs to an SMA breakout plate. That they screwed up. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you could see like the solder joints on the copper wires there make me a little bit sick to my stomach if I <laughs> look at them. <laughs> uh, when they first came, there's six there's six fourteen wires, fourteen coaxes into the puck. I think nine or ten of them had like 15 dB resonances, which basically meant that they they, they screwed up the connectorization. Yeah. They came back to fix it. Um, they sent a technician who had never used a VNA before. I was like, "Are you going to test it with VNA?" He's like, "What's a VNA?" So we, <laughs> we lend him our VNA, and it, and then he started resoldering them, and he resoldered a bunch of them, but. He brought exactly the number of connectors for the number of broken cables. Uh. And so he screwed up like a couple of the connectors and then he didn't have enough connectors to do all of them. So there are three coaxes in this bundle, which are the bad ones, which have like a four or five dB dip at six gigahertz. Don't use them. Is it documented anywhere? Which? No. Okay. okay. Probably somewhere, <laughs> but I don't know where. <laughs> so that's my first warning and then I was like you know Oxford doesn't reply to emails so I gave up trying to get them to fix it um, okay so here are the two looms that were installed from Oxford they come out to break out to these two micro D connectors over here I believe right I need a pointing stick uh, yeah. so those also had a funny story because they were we are we ordered niobium titanium cables for 4k to mixing chamber and the resistance the you know then vibor uh tried to we after a year we tried to install a microwave switch here and it, when he cooled down the fridge it was 300 ohms we're like how the hell can it be 300 ohms and at oxford we were like oxford you you've screwed up the looms and they're like no no it must be the wiring on your switch <laughs> So we dropped all the cans, and they did a whole test where we short-circuited to the, the, the micro D connectors yeah. together with just a solder joint, and cooled it down, it was still 300 ohms. It turns out that they had installed high-resistance manganin wiring instead of niobium oh titanium. Oh my god. <laughs> and because it's copper, it's copper nickel matrix, you can't tell by the room temperature resistance that you picked the wrong one out of the wrong drawer. So then, when, a year and a half later, they agreed to replace it with, with when, they, when the turbo broke, and they replaced the turbo on the warranty. They agreed to replace the niobium titanium, the, the manganin with niobium titanium. They sent a guy all the way over from England with the stuff. Mm -hmm. He came in, and, and I said, okay, so here are the two looms. And he's like, what do you mean two looms? And I was like, yeah, we have two looms, right? You know that from the order. He's like, oh, I only brought one loom. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the end they sent us the other one we did it ourselves. Okay, this is a they cut. I think they're both now in titanium from 4K up. Uh, these, of course, are the bundles, quote unquote, super inconvenient. Bundle one and bundle two. These are the 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 Oxford delivered Nabium titanium uh, cables, and these over here are self-installed nickel uh, Cooper nickel cables. We know now uh, that these cables tend to get very bad solder joints if you bend them. Uh, you get a kink in the little center conductor and they break off inside and then have like cool down the cool down. Sometimes the wire touches, sometimes it doesn't. That's why we're replacing, well that's why we had originally wanted to replace all the wiring in the, new, in the old Blue Force with a Cooper Nick with a 1.2 millimeter stainless coax that Clint and Vault and Damo was going to solder, but it turns out Damo didn't understand how to solder them, and so after spending 2,000 years, they only soldered three cables or six cables. I think they soldered eight cables, two of which didn't work. Um, so, but just a warning: these could become a problem in the future. Okay. 
Um, but the rest of these cables are just uh, factory installed uh, uh, Cooper, uh, niobium titanium. What you see here. So it's only, it's the whole bundle is Cooper nickel or only the. No, in principle, we, in principle, the whole bundle was supposed, each bundle was supposed to have four uh, niobium titanium because that's what I had money for. Uh -huh. Input and output because they were like, it's no different to make the inputs also niobium titanium. So I was like, why not? Uh, but then we need more lines, and I think that's when we installed these Cooper Nickel ourselves. Oh, okay. Um, so th from factory, there's four, uh, there's eight in, eight in out lines. Some of them are out lines, and they have amplifiers at four Kelvin, which you can't see because they're up there. Uh, and some of them are only in lines. The, the there's attenuators top and bottom. Apparently, if I look here on this stage. Uh, here we put the attenuators below. All this stuff you see here, that's copper powder filters. That's for DC wires. So you might, that's why it comes out on DC wires, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go to the loom. You might say, why the hell are you putting DC wires through a coax or cable? Yeah. That's through an SMA. Because basically here you have noise and the, you have these RC, so the, the, you want to minimize the noise hitting your sample. So what you do is you first go through an RC filter that gets rid of about to 50 kilohertz or so, I think these ones are. But of course, uh, like that thing leaks like a leaks like a like a bucket with a hole in it at gigahertz. So then, how do you get rid of the gigahertz noise? Then you put it through these things, which are copper powder filters, which are basically sort of skin effect filters that have a very sharp a very sharp roll off at like 10 gigahertz. They're sometimes called infrared filters. It's a bit like echo sword. Hmm. It's sort of an alternative to echo sword, uh, and then, and then after after this, in principle, all the way up to 100 gigahertz, it's super flat band or super deep killing of all noise. The problem is that if you just come back out to a DC wire again, then you pick up all the yeah. all the noise uh, from everywhere okay. again, right? Yeah. Okay. So then the idea is that after the copper powder filter, you should go inside of a coax the rest of the way. So then these go into DC, these go as coaxes. And they typically will go into the, the, the port of a bias T, like this guy over here. And I bought very, usually bias T's have solder wire, like solder terminals for connecting your DC because yeah. it's for powering your amplifier in your, your satellite or something. But in this case, I bought very special, you know, bias T's that have a, an SMA connector on the DC port because then we can ensure that we have we do not let any radiation leak in from after our copper powder filter. Clear? Yeah, clear. Uh, so if we're going, if we're going to say for the rest of our lives we don't need DC bias anymore, I mean this is really for this is really for the graphene project where we're putting a DC bias directly on the junction. Right. Yep. These could be also maybe used for flux lines, but yeah. I think the, these lines, these things are too resistive for the flux lines. For flux lines, okay. the copper powder filters and the, the RC filters here have too much resistance, and it result in too much heating, and you'll heat up your whole cryostat. So that's why you, you typically use a different approach for filtering your, like four, you can't put four milliamps through this. You can put like ten nanoamps for okay. like yeah. you know, like doing IVs if you a junction, like Mark and Felix mm -hmm. did, but milliamps your fridge just heats up. Okay. So actually, we don't really plan to do any DC biasing of junctions at 10 nanoamps. We can take all this out if we want. Um, and we also don't need the bias T's. Um, mm. Yeah. Further questions? No. No? No, at this point. Okay. All right. <laughs>